I want you to look at two politicians this morning. I want you to look at David Cameron and Esther McVeigh, who until recently was one of the presenters on GBBs, where they uh, routinely bang on about how awful vaccines are, um, how awful the government is, and how we are secretly being governed by uh, a, 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 a clandestine cabal of power brokers, none of whom can ever be named. It's a bit like a Nadine Dorries Dor- novel. I'm sorry, a, a, a non-fiction, a work of non-fiction by, by Nadine Dorries. Um, and... and He's brought her back. So it seems to me that our analysis yesterday that the sacking of Suella Braverman marked an end of the culture wars was quite spectacularly wrong. While it looked right, I was claiming the credit for it, whereas in fact it was all you. You you rang in repeatedly to tell me that the appointment... I can't believe how wrong you got that, honestly. It's a good job no one's paying you because you'd have to give them the money back. It was categorically your fault that yesterday's programme very much gave the impression that we all thought the sacking of Suella Braverman spoke to... Uh, a cessation of culture war, as if Sunak had given up on that. Because at tea time, he appointed Esther McVeigh and let it be known, because these things don't appear in the newspapers by accident. They don't sprout organically from the ether. Um, He let it be known that she would be the minister for wokeness. The minister for wokeness. Even Nick this morning struggling really to pin down precisely what is meant by woke or or wokery. I presume it's calendars not having Christmas in them, probably, despite the fact that it's a calendar designed to make the general population aware of festivals they wouldn't ordinarily celebrate or be aware of. But hey-ho, on we go. How can a party contain both David Cameron and Esther McVeigh? 03456060973. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three, and I know that this will sound a little insincere, but it isn't. It, it, it's just that you judge me by my past performances. It, it's interesting to me who could possibly still support the Conservative Party. I don't, and don't take this the wrong way, but I don't think you actually do support the Conservative Party. I just think that you are so caught up in footballification that you cannot conceive of ever voting for anybody else. You're like a die-hard fan. You're like the fans that go to all the away games. What percentage of the average support for a football team go to all the away games? I I wonder if it holds true across all clubs, actually, even if you've got a very small following. The rough percentage of fans that will make the journey for an away game is about a quarter or a, a tenth of the average home crowd. I think Kidderminster sent about 100. We got about 100 people to uh, Aldershot the other night, which which gives you a a sort of idea about what the diehard Kidderminster Harriers fans look like. But the diehard fans of the Conservative Party have given up, really, um, trying to work out what it is they stand for. You're just certain that you hate everybody else. You're just absolutely certain that you hate everybody else. And therefore, your support for them is unshakable. Because I bet you could not tell me what they currently stand for. The, 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 the mystery of wokeness, this incredibly inflammatory idea, it just it means whatever. If you're joining me, if you've been in a coma for 10 years, it's the new word for political correctness. You know, you, you can't say what you want in this country anymore without, without, without being sent to prison, as Stuart Lee has famously explained. You can't say what you want about immigration without being called a racist. Say racists. Um, and, and that was political correctness gone mad. You're not allowed to, you know, say disgustingly rude things about people anymore without feeling. And that's changed, really. You can now. Flipping Farage is going into what I'm a celebrity get me out of here. So, you know, the, the idea that you can't be publicly racist anymore in this country, I think, has been fairly uh, roundly dismissed in recent years. But you have to stay angry. These people have to stay angry. I can't get angry about that. You got what you wanted with Brexit. You got what you wanted with Boris Johnson. You got what you wanted with Liz Truss. You got what you wanted with uh, David Cameron, even, I suppose. So you've got you've had everything you've wanted for 13 years. All the things you voted for have happened, and you're still bloody furious. What are you furious about today? Calendars. Okay, that's great. You're furious about calendars. But don't turn it into actual policy because the minute you turn it into actual policy, you lose the sensibles. So you've got that 15 to 20 percent of support, which is probably the same 15 to 20 percent that would be comfortable with a fascist movement rising into power in this country. They can't possibly go anywhere else except the Conservative Party or whatever weird little outfit sets up just to the right of the Tory party. Increasingly hard to do, of course, because the Tory party's moved so far to the right in the last few years. At 15 to 20 percent of the electorate. 
If you're not in that, but you are a one nation conservative or you are uh, uh, desirous of lower taxes or you think that too much money is spent on things like helping the poor or educating children or um, child benefit, you know, you, you, you very much of that view, then you are not necessarily going to go along with uh, substantive anti-woke policies like, for example, inciting violent far-right thugs to desecrate the cenotaph while pretending that the real problem is being caused by 300,000 overwhelmingly peaceful protesters a mile and a half away. That, I think, breaks the fourth wall. It breaks the, it breaks the paradigm. You can't carry on supporting that, so Braverman had to go. Replace her with, what's the chops, McVeigh? And it's absolutely fine because she'll just shout about pride helmets, people dancing at the Notting Hill Carnival and calendars. She, she can't do anything about any of it, but at least there'll still be someone there to, if you like, a maypole around which all the gammon can dance. He needs a gammon maypole. That's quite a good figure of speech. Actually. So, uh, Estimate Vey is a gammon maypole. He needs something around which they can all dance, but whatever you do... Don't do anything substantive or meaningful, like attack the Metropolitan Police and incite far-right hooligans to desecrate the Cenotaph. Which is why, in an almost perfect proof of this theory, which is why she can attend Cabinet, but she is not a Cabinet member. That is, I think, the icing, the cherry on the icing on the cake of the theory that she is a PR appointment, a gammon maypole, whereas Cameron is a political appointment.